All right, this is AP, A, B, and BC Calculus. We are doing Unit 5, Section 10, which is an intro to optimization problems. So essentially what we're learning here is that because a derivative can be used uh, to find extrema, we can use uh, differentiation in problems that involve optimizing something, which is to say finding the maximum or minimum value of some function in an interval, uh, generally in a word problem setting. So. Uh, to optimize something is to make it the best possible version. So uh, this generally means an extremum of some kind. You typically see superlative adjectives like EST in these problems. For instance, uh, you'll see lowest cost or least cost, which would mean the minimum cost. Optimal income would mean the maximum income. Greatest area, maximum area. Closest means minimum distance. Largest might mean the max maximum volume, area, whatever, depending on the context, right? It, it would depend on what the context of the problem is. Uh, and if you hear smallest, it means the minimum of something, right? Minimum area, minimum volume, whatever the context of the problem is. So we already know how to find the extrema of a function using the first derivative test. Uh, on the next, not nest, uh, on the next slide, uh, we'll walk through some of the basic steps. Uh, that's going to bug me. There we go. Uh, walk through some of the basic steps that are applicable to all optimization problems. And then in the next section, uh, when we do 511, we'll do some slightly harder optimization problems, but that's sort of the gist of it. Um, all right, so common steps for all optimization problems. Number one, determine what quantity you need to optimize. Is it area, distance, cost, income, uh, and whether you want the max or min, right? So if you're talking about uh, optimizing cost, you probably want minimum cost. Ooh, excuse me. Uh, second, write an equation for whatever quantity you determined you need. Uh, if your equation has more than two variables, you're going to need to use some auxiliary equation to replace a variable, which we're going to walk in, uh, walk through a little bit. Differentiate your equation with respect to your independent variable. Find the critical points of the function, or uh, and make a sign chart. Or if the second derivative is super if the second derivative is super easy, you could apply the second derivative test uh, at the critical points. That depends a lot on the problem itself. Uh, use your sign chart to answer the question asked. Uh, answer your question in words with appropriate units uh, if applicable. Generally, optimization problems are word problems. Not always, but often, so units are often uh, in, in play. All right. Let's walk through uh, some of the basic examples. So. Find two positive numbers such that their product is 192 and the sum of the first plus three times the second is a minimum. Okay, so the thing we're trying to minimize, right? So the thing we're trying to minimize, we want to minimize a thing I'm going to call, uh, let's just call it S. And S is the sum of the first. So I'm going to say that my numbers are X and Y, okay? So S is the sum of the first plus three times the second, okay? So I want to minimize S, right? But if you notice, when we go back a slide, I said that if your equation has more than two variables, you're going to need some auxiliary equation to get rid of one of them. Well, conveniently, I have an auxiliary equation. I was told that the product of these numbers is 192. So X times Y is a 192 meaning I could replace y with a 192 over x. So the thing I want to minimize is s. I just called it s for some, right? So I have x plus a 3 times a 192 over x, right? Um, this is the thing I want to minimize. So if you want to rewrite this, uh, you certainly can. Let's see, that would be a 600, but I took out 24 of them, right? So that should be a 576x to the negative first. All right, so this is the thing I'm going to differentiate. So I need to find the, uh, I want to find the minimum. So I need to find the min. And there's two ways to do this. You can either uh, do the first derivative test where you find the first derivative, find the critical uh, numbers, and then uh, make a sign chart, and that's absolutely fine. Or you could just bust out the second derivative test, depending on how easy it is. So s prime is going to be a 1 minus a 576x to the negative second. If I clean this up, because I'm going to have to find uh, some values, right? So I want where this thing is 0 or does not exist, right? Um, I would suggest the easiest way to do this is to get a common denominator where they are both over x squared. So x squared minus 576 all over x squared. 
So I get that S prime, so for my critical numbers, right, I get that S prime uh, equals zero when X squared minus 576 equals zero, right? Uh, which I'm pretty sure gives me a 24, right? Because that's 30 minus 6 and 30 minus 6, so it's 900 uh, minus 360, right? Which would be a 540 plus the, uh, yeah. Plus the 36. Yeah, yeah, there you go. All right, cool. So uh, so I get that x is plus or minus 24, and we'll talk about that in a sec. Or when s prime does not exist, which is going to be when x is 0, because you can't divide by 0. But they told me that I need to find positive numbers. So of all of these options, really the only candidate is x is 24. Now, uh, so this is the only viable critical point, because I know, uh, I know that my values have to be positive, which rules out zero. It also rules out the negative 24. So at this point, honestly, you could kind of be a lazy bum and say, hey, the only possible critical point is when x is 24, so I'm done. If you, uh, and then you could find your y value, which would absolutely be fine. Uh, if, so, so if you notice that this is the only viable critical point, it wouldn't be wrong to say, cool, so that has to be it, right? Must be it. And if that's the case, then you can go ahead and find that y is 192 divided by 24. Uh, sometimes my brain is too tired to do math. Uh, that would be a 95, 96, and divide by, that's got to be an 8. So that's an 8. Cool. Um, great. So. You get an 8, and that's fine. And they say uh, find two positive numbers such that that's true, right? So the two positive numbers are 24 and 8. Now, if you aren't feeling great about the idea of, oh, hey, uh, that's the only viable critical point, the, the easiest way to check is not to make a sign chart, although you certainly could make a sign chart. The easiest way to check is probably to use the second derivative test because here the second derivative is very easy to find. Remember that s prime uh, was this. So s double prime is just going to be a negative 576 times a negative 2, which I honestly don't even care what that comes out to be, uh, times an x and negative third. So what's going to happen is I end up getting that this is a uh, positive, whatever 576 times 2 is, because again, I don't really care, over an x cubed. So when I plug in a positive 24, I end up getting that, that this thing, s double prime, is greater than zero, and we've already seen before that that means that we have to be looking at a min, so yay, it's a min, and I'm fine. Again, I honestly probably would have stopped at, hey, these are the answers because it's the only viable critical point. All right, go ahead and try P1. You can certainly do it without me. Uh, two positive numbers such that the sum of the first and twice the second is 100, and their product is a maximum. So the thing you're trying to maximize, right, you want the max product. I'm going to call the numbers x and y, right? Uh, so you want to maximize p equals x times y, right? Uh, because that's three variables, you need an auxiliary equation, and here's your auxiliary equation. The sum of the first and twice the second is 100. So x plus twice the second number, which would be 2y, equals 100, right? Um, so it doesn't matter to me which equation, like you could solve for either variable, it really doesn't matter if you solve for x or y. Uh, because here both x and y are independent variables, they are not the dependent variable. So I'm going to go ahead and solve. Ooh, excuse me. It really wouldn't matter. I guess it's easier to solve for x. It doesn't really matter at all which one you choose to solve for. Um, partly because it's arbitrary which one you called x and y, right? Like you chose to call the first x and the second y, but it doesn't really matter. So I'm going to solve for x in this case because it's easier and I didn't do it last time just to prove to you that it really doesn't matter because I assigned the x and the y. So my product is, uh, sorry x, which is 100 minus 2y, times y. My product would be 100y minus 2y squared. So if I want maximum product, I need to differentiate. Now, some of you are probably thinking, hey, Hogan, why would I differentiate? I could use algebra 2 here. And you're right, you could. It's a parabola. It's a frown. Uh, you could totally just cheat and say, wait a second. Uh, this has to happen when y, because here the y, not the, not the x is my independent variable, is negative b over 2a, right? since your formula is negative 2y squared plus 100y, uh, your b is the 100, your 
your a is the negative 2. So you'd get that, that y would have to be a negative b, so that's negative 100, right? over a negative 4, which is a 25. And that's definitely not cheating. But if you chose to do this, you could also find p prime, right? So, so it's not cheating to do algebra to figure this out. Uh, remember that all the math you've learned to this point, it's not cheating if you make use of that, right? Knowing how to do more than someone else isn't cheating unless you're finding that information by, I don't know, going on the internet and getting it from some other source. If you just know how to do something from having done something before, it's not cheating. It's awesome. If you chose to go the calc route to do it, uh, you'd find your critical numbers by finding when p prime is 0, which is 100 minus 4y equals 0, and you very quickly get y is 25, which spits you back into the same spot uh, where you recognize, oh, hey, uh, that's it. That's, that's the answer. And you can see if you did it this way, you can see that it's definitely a maximum. Uh, it is the only critical point, right? So, so this is the only critical point, which pretty much means it's going to have to be your max, right? That's your only critical number. Uh, and then to find x, you know that x times y uh, oh, sorry, you don't want x times y. You want uh, this one. We have x is 100 minus 2y. So, you know, x is 100 minus 2y. So, x is 100 minus 50. x is 50. So, my two numbers are 50 and 25. And again, you could find this using the second derivative test as well. Uh, you'll see if you did use p double prime that p double prime is just a negative 4, uh, which means that whatever you're looking at, uh, P is concave down. It's definitely, look, you're definitely looking at a max. All right. On to word problems. A rectangle has its base on the x-axis and its upper vertices on the parabola y equals 25 minus x squared. Find the maximum possible area of the rectangle. Okay, so this is a frown, right? That parabola is a frown. So if we just look at what this graph looks like, and this is a terrible drawing, but it's a parabola like this, right? Uh, that intersects the y-axis at 27 and is symmetric about x equals 0. What they're saying is that there is a rectangle, right, that has its base on the x-axis like this, right, and its upper vertices on this parabola. So essentially the base is x and x because it's x in both directions, and, and the height of the uh, rectangle would be y, right? They want to find the maximum area of the rectangle. Well, the area, so I want to find max area, the area of the rectangle would be 2x times y, right? The trick is that y isn't just anything. Y is on this curve, so that's my auxiliary equation. So my area is 2x times this 27 minus x squared. I would suggest that you distribute. You're going to get 54x minus 2x cubed. So in order to maximize area, I'm going to find a prime which is going to be 54 minus 6x squared, right? Or if I yank a negative 6 out, I get an x squared minus 9. So I end up getting uh, that my, my critical numbers are x plus 3, x minus 3. So my critical numbers are x is negative 3. So a prime equals, and then I want when a prime is 0, which is equal to these things. Uh, so I get plus and minus 3. So the trick is that that's the same answer, right? Because if this x is 3, then this x goes all the way to negative 3. So that's really the only set of critical numbers, right? They want me to find the maximum possible area, right? So they, they don't want me to find the x values where the max area occurs. They want the max area. Well, if this is a 3, that makes this also a 3, right? Um, and since y is 27 minus 3 squared, y is going to be at 27 minus 9, which is an 18. So the max area is going to be 3 times 18, which is 54. Uh, there are no units here. If there had been units, you would have to use units. Again, I didn't bother to make the sign chart. I didn't mind because it's the only possible critical numbers. Um, you could make a sign chart if you wanted, uh, but again, it's not, it's not really going to matter. Um, there's no such thing as having a side length of negative 3, which is why this doesn't make logical sense in the context of this problem. All right, try P2, and this will be the end of this video. So a rancher has 28 feet of fencing. He would like to use this fencing to create the biggest possible rectangular grazing area for his sheep. What is the maximal area he can create? Okay, so uh, 28 feet of fencing, right? Uh, 28 feet of fencing is perimeter. Now, you're assuming since he wants to make the largest possible fence, uh, he's going to use all 28 feet, right? Um, and maximal area... Right, so what you're maximizing is the area. So let's draw what this looks like. So I'm going to go ahead and use 
uh, x for the length and y for the width. It doesn't really matter. Um, so I recognize, or you could use L and H, it really doesn't matter. Um, it's a rectangle, so I recognize that the perimeter, which is a 28, is 2x plus 2y. So this is my auxiliary equation, because it's not the thing I want to maximize or minimize, but it's something I'm probably going to need. And I recognize that the area of this thing is x times y. So I'm going to go ahead and replace one of these variables. I'm going to say that 14 equals x plus y. Uh, let's just go ahead and solve for x. Uh, it doesn't really matter, again, it's arbitrary which one I picked. So let's just solve for x, so I get 14 minus y equals x. So now I can say that my area is 14 minus y times y. Area is 14y minus y squared. Now, you might notice that this is a parabola, right? This is a parabola. Now, admittedly, we used y squared instead of x squared, but again, it's arbitrary which letter you're using. Uh, this thing is going to have its max when y is negative b over 2a. It's okay to use algebra 2 to get to these answers, right? Um, if I give you an optimization problem that happens to be a parabola, by all means, use your algebra skills. So if I did this, I would get that y is negative 14, right, because that's negative b over 2a, which is negative 2. I'd get y is 7. Once you know that y is 7, you can very quickly reverse engineer that basically you're looking at a square, right? Since x is 14 minus y, x is also 7. Oh, hey, it's a square, right? Um, so if you wanted to use calculus to do that, you're going to get the same place just as fast, right? So you're going to get that when a prime is 0, uh, that's when 14 minus 2y is 0. Oh, look, y is 7, and then you're going to get to the same spot where x is 7. So your answer uh, is 7 feet by 7 feet equals 49 feet squared, right? Because they say, what is the maximal area? They don't actually want the 7 by 7. They want the 49. And that's it for this video.